technically, we were each other's coming out buddies. We were, by some weird accident. Mm -hmm. um, it happened uh, in 2020, the start of 2020. It began this thing, this bond that we didn't know we had. Hi guys. Um, today, I thought I would talk about my first pride uh, because there isn't one this year, it's inside. Um, and I thought, who better to talk to than someone else that has also come out this year? Hi Joel. It's me, yeah, hey, thanks for having me. That was very much, it's me, Adele energy. It's me, Ed where's that from? Why um, do I know that? Her carpool karaoke with James Corden, she's like, it's me, Adele. Oh yeah, it's me, Adele. Yeah guys, it's me, Joel, and uh, <laughs> I'm in the same predicament as Nikki, so we thought we'd have a chat about Pride and like the first out summer um, mm. and how it's been ruined. There's a lot That's more adjectives shame. that I just I want to put in that aren't PG. Um, yeah. I do. We we can swear if it comes to it, but like I try not okay. to sometimes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want people to think that I'm not cultured enough to use words. Yeah. No, you are. You've got a university education, kind of. Thanks. No, I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. I just because uh, you actually did study a real subject. You didn't do like golf course management or something. Is that real? That's a degree. That's no. a real degree. Pride definition. Gay pride or LGBT pride is the promotion of self-affirmation, dignity, equality, and increased visibility of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people as a social group. All of us maybe had a bit of internalized homophobia growing up. It'd be and hard I think not growing to. up. Yeah, exactly, in the society we live in. But I think that um, I grew up with the kind of thought, even till a few years ago, being like, pride, what is it? It's just like, like, it's unnecessary. And But actually, if I'd heard that definition that it promotes dignity and self-respect or whatever mm. those words were because I've got a short-term memory um, <laughs> <laughs> that I would have maybe felt more positively towards it. I feel like we've known each other for about f four years but mm -hmm. I feel like we only really properly got to know each other over the last like, 18 months. And then it's just been getting closer and closer and closer and then I think mm. maybe especially over the last maybe six months I feel like gone even closer so because what a beautiful friendship. What a beautiful first of all you got a dog which helps, yeah, especially I in do. my friendship circles. Technically, we were each other's coming out buddies. We were, by some weird accident. Mm -hmm. um, it happened uh, in 2020, the start of 2020. It began this thing, this bond that we didn't know we had. No, like this little gay journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Can I just say, as I'm saying this, all my windows are open. I'm wearing a rainbow <laughs> t-shirt. This is not how I started the year. So actually how it happened step by step is, I came okay. out to my friends and I was like, mm -hmm. I think I was talking to you at the time and I was like, I feel like I just want to tell Joel because that's like, because our friendship was newer, mm. I, it was less scary to t for me to tell you than someone like, a f someone I'd been friends with for like 10 years, you know? Yeah. So I just, I, yeah, I did yeah. text you, I was like, Joel, uh, by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> and you went, well, interestingly enough, so am I. As and if we've been friends this long, and also, not just that, but you'd already come out to your friends and family when mm. I came to your house later in January, yeah. and you still hadn't said anything, mm -hmm. I still hadn't said anything, so I just think back to that moment in your living room where it was like, we both knew that we were holding something back from each other and not telling each other something. Like, it's just very weird. Because we spoke about it the next day, so uh, when I told you we were actually going to the Sonic the Hedgehog thing the yeah. next day, like a press event, yeah. Um, and we we sat down to watch the film. I was like, I don't really want to watch the film. I just want to talk about gay shit with Joel. Because then my backstory before that was that mm. I'd been out to my friends and most of my family members, except for my parents, yeah. um, for about a year and a half. So it'd been a long time of like that, like it felt like ages ago since I first took that step of telling people. So mm. I'd sort of accepted it in myself. I'd been dating for like a year and a half. So I felt very comfortable with it, but I hadn't told my parents. I just remember getting that text from you and not only feeling like, yes, we've got like this in common. It, like you just know that feeling where you feel known and you're like, oh, hmm. someone else gets it. Yeah. But I was also like, as if Nikki has been out like two weeks and he's already told his parents, I've been out like a year and a half and I still haven't had the guts to tell my parents. And I feel like you coming out to me really gave me a kick up the bum to be like, you need to tell your parents. Not that you told me that, but that's what it made me hmm. think. I was like, he's been so brave. He's told everyone in the space of two weeks and it's taken me a year and a that's half. That's so interesting though because to me uh, what you're saying was braver because you'd been out for a year and a half prior to telling your parents. Our public coming out as well mm. was pretty much at a very similar time yeah. so it wasn't just that oh I've got a friend who's got a similar sort of story to me but it was mm. like I've got a friend who has the same job that I do yeah. 
and now has to like tell his audience and I've got to do that and it's like so it was it was really nice to have someone to bond with over that. Was there a potential reality where you didn't tell your subscribers or did you just see that as the natural progression of things like that's how it's gonna happen? I think I did see it as like it had to happen at some stage mm. because I do share everything on my personal channel especially that's just my life and it's like it never felt like a burden hiding it, but I was like, it would be nice just to be open and honest yeah. about it. I will probably come onto this later, but I was really worried about it and the reaction people would have. But I knew no matter how negative people might be, there would be some people that would see me as a role model. And I was like, I really want to be that. For me, it kind of, once I told a couple of people, there was no reality in which I didn't want to but, right, so for me, the reason I made a video is because what held me back for so long was the anxiety of telling someone and their reaction being bad. So the point of making yeah. a video was like, well, I'm in this really privileged position where I can tell thousands of people at once that I'm never going to have to tell again. And it's also going to be on yeah. the internet forever more for other people to see, so I don't have to tell them face to face. Now I have mm. no problem doing it, but I yeah. guess the early coming out stage, that anxiety was still there. Like, I remember yeah. telling, I told Linda and Sammy, this is my YouTube channel, mm. so that I've like told this story. So if you want to hear that story, you can go and check it on YouTube. But I remember driving to my parents being like, I'm telling them today, I'm telling them today, I'm telling them today. Oh my gosh. And I looked at my parents, I was like, uh, so the reason I got stressed out about the dating app thing is because, and I'm at that little pause, I was like, <laughs> oh, they already know, they already know what I'm about to say because they've just seen this weird pause. Uh, I was like, so I don't want to date women. And then they were like, what? And I was like, why are you making me say it again? Oh, wow. Yeah, just, just think about it, it's really weird. And then, I think I told you the day after I told my parents because I was like on this roll, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to start telling more people. Yeah. So in answer to your question, no, there was no reality where I wasn't going to make a video because I think it was just the right thing for me. Yeah, oh, definitely. And I think, like you said, it's part of our life. Or mm. like I said, I can't remember. But it's part of our life that it just feels weird not to address it. Yeah. What was the first yeah. step for you? Like, was the what was the first thing? If you're happy to talk about it, because I know it's sensitive. Um, no, it's fine. I think the biggest first step that I took was to go on my very first date with a boy, which yep. was so scary. Even just getting on the dating app was terrifying. And I think I think maybe you've had similar experiences where you're just like, no, no, no. And then you like delete it. Yep. And then you go back on and you're like, for some reason it feels really scary. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember going on my first date with this guy who, who was like out to all of his friends, family, very comfortable in and of himself. Mm -hmm. And I remember the awkward at Nando's and he was like, oh, so, have you got a funny coming out story? And I was like, um, <laughs> you're funny the story. only person that knows. <laughs> yeah, literally, it was so awkward. And then that ended pretty soonish because I don't blame him. He didn't really want to date someone that, you know, was as closeted as I was. Um, but from that moment, I then started telling people. So I think that was the first stage. And the second stage was telling my friends. And then I think mm -hmm. the next milestone wasn't until a year and a half later when I told my parents. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think those were the biggest milestones. I feel like with you, it's less spread out because you did yours in such a short period of time, but it, there are still milestones there. Mm. I, mean, I think with me, I feel like this would have been a year of going on a first date, doing all that stuff. And then obviously, I, yeah. I mean, dating apps have been fruitful in oh, wow. lockdown, but we won't go into That's that yet. That's good. Uh, okay. Yeah. I feel like everything happened so quickly and now it's like I'm a concertina where everything is just being longed out for like yeah. that that excitement has just been dragged out where yeah. I'm just kind of in limbo so really yeah. all the big moments happened in the space of a month and then yeah. we went into lockdown and I was like cool but I did go to Disney as a hashtag gay and it just felt very magical well, that's good that was like your last outing before lockdown yeah. mind the pun oh. yeah <laughs> outing <laughs> um, what would you tell your younger you like 15 year old um, you and not everyone can relate to this i think it's to do with my faith because as a christian that has been a mm. huge barrier which is probably like a completely another topic for another sort of thing because it's su such a big issue and i grew up thinking that being gay was wrong and it was yeah. sinful and that you can't be a christian and gay like it's either or either you're a christian and you follow like the bible or nothing it would literally be like it is not a sin to be gay god yep. does not hate you because you're gay and as i said i know it doesn't apply to everyone not everyone believes in god that's fine but i do so that's why i would tell myself you know i remember thinking god does when you not think that we're talking to me obviously religion is a is a, is a factor that i didn't have and i remember yeah. being like feeling lucky that, that wasn't something that i had in my life to also factor in not yeah i'm not lucky to not have religion like i think that everyone is free to believe what they like and I think that there's a lot of pluses that come from religion I'm just not a religious person mm. um, yeah but well, no, it's definitely a barrier mm. yeah no it's true and it's um like 
just to give some context, my parents are so lovely about it and open about it. They'll talk to me about my dating life, my boyfriend or whatever it is. And like, they're very open and accepting. Yeah. But that like, I, I don't know. I just still thought that they, cause I know maybe what their beliefs are. They might not necessarily agree with me. I think they don't agree with my theology, mm. but they, they still love me the same and they treat me no differently. So in that respect, I'm very lucky because I think lots mm. of religious parents might have disowned their children, whereas my parents are like, mm, absolutely not. Like, we still love you. What well, for me, and maybe you'll get this because we've mentioned dramaticness, but like when mm. I had this expectation that when I, if I was to tell someone that there would be this tectonic shift, and it's really hard to explain, but I just expected fireworks, and it didn't, yeah. none of that happened. Like it was all very relaxed. No. It was. I told my parents, and they just carried on with their puzzle, and were like, "Well, that's great." And I was like, <laughs> and then I cried because I was like, "Oh my god, like, I've done it." That, that was. I just. That was it. Because I came up to my parents via text, so um, mm. been saying it in person. Um, one of my friends, Doug, who came out. Mm. I actually know when he came out. He's just always been gay since I've known him. So I'm just assuming. <laughs> <he's> been, <laughs> yeah. Like, he was born that way. But um, he, I said to him, um, I was like. Is it bad to come out to friends over text? And he was like, no, why would that be bad? And I was like, interesting. This has opened all sorts of opportunities for me because I was like, I'm gonna like <laughs> yeah. text everyone. And then I text um, my dad's family. I let my mum tell my aunts because like her, her side of the family, because I was like, I don't really yeah. want to, I don't feel the need to do that. Like I don't feel the need to no. tell everyone myself, like you can pass this on now. No, I probably exactly. shared the problem half, like the anxiety is gone. Exactly, um, please take that admin from me. I don't yeah. need that in my life. <laughs> can you be my assistant here on this? But that's the joy about doing a YouTube video. Like I didn't tell yes. any of my aunts, uncles, cousins, oh my God. like anything. And so I got messages from them being like, just lovely messages being like, oh, that's amazing. Like mm -hmm. love it, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't feel any guilt in not telling them because I'm like, well, I yeah. don't tell you, I didn't tell you when I got a puppy, like you found out via social media. I went to Pride once um, and walked behind the PlayStation float, um, obviously was closeted um, and I went with friends and I, I mean, I loved, first of all, I loved it. I thought it was a really important experience for me to have, mm. but I got a bit of negative stuff online, which was hurtful because obviously I am gay. Some basically people assumed I'd been paid to go, which newsflash I wasn't. I wish. Yeah, like dollar <laughs> sponsor me. Yeah. Um, no, because we'd worked with PlayStation that year, and they were like, "Look, we're at Pride this year. We have lots of free space. We're mm. inviting sort of business partners and people to come along." And I was like, "Yeah, I'll come." But we got a, we got um, some negative feedback or criticism, I might put it, uh, online from from fellow content creators being like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this, this, and this." And I was like, "Wow, the irony." The irony. If only you knew. Yeah. <laughs> now you do. It's a lot to mm. have in common with someone. It's not like saying, oh, my favorite singer is Beyonce. Like, it's more like, you know, that life experience you have, We also, I've also shared that life experience. Yeah. No, it's true. And it is reassuring to have that. I mean, I know at the start of lockdown, you spoke quite a lot publicly about like, oh, I've just come out and now like, it's locked down, like, it's gonna be my first out year. And I remember at the time, not in a negative way, cause you know, I love you, but I was just like, Oh, well, that's a bit dramatic. Like it'll be done <laughs> soon. Thinking that probably lockdown would be like three weeks or a yeah. month or at the most. Here we but are now, in June. I can to yeah, here we are in June, <laughs> still locked down, going into July. I don't know if I definitely would have gone to Pride. Probably yeah. would, but a big crowds sort of. I but I just get a bit anxious in I crowds. Mean. But I think what I was looking forward to is sort of standing up for who I am mm. and seeing Pride as a protest. Because I've seen lots of being like Pride is actually yeah. it's not really a party or celebration. It's actually a protest. Of, of being like my love is just as valid and my sexuality is just as valid as anyone else's. As, as recent coming out ease, there's like that element where you spent so long, because the opposite of uh, pride is shame, as an emotion is shame. Mm. So yeah. I guess there is, the reason it would feel uncomfortable straight off coming out and being like, I'm part of a community is because you've not felt like that. Like you've not felt yeah. part of something, you felt very alone. So to mm. be thrust into what I get is, is a community or a movement like that is like, whoa. Like it's a big, yeah. it's a big step. And so I know that in your coming out video, you kind of said you don't know if you feel part of a community yet. Do you think that's changed mm. now? I do. I still mm. don't feel part of a community. And I think that's like been exacerbated by lockdown Yeah. because I've got no one to socialize with or talk to about it apart from you. And that's great. I don't need anyone else, but no, <laughs> it would be nice to have a community and meet other people in the LGBTQ plus community. I mean, yeah. I do have gay friends and like, uh, but no one that I've properly socialized with and especially not since I came out myself. So mm. yeah, I don't feel really part of the community and I don't really know what my 
voices suddenly there is this pressure as i said i would like yeah. to be a role model but suddenly there is a pressure to be a role model whether you want it or not and it just puts a lot of pressure on myself and i'm sure you have that as well where you're like oh i don't know how to have a voice mm. in and also community. it's like working out what your your thoughts are like mm. on things yeah i mean obviously online mm. exists but it, i just think that the physical element to um things is quite important like I wrote an article for yeah. Metro and one of the uh, something that kept coming up with the interview interviewees that I spoke to was that they all wished that there was a, a way of sharing physical space with people they are out to and I think there's yeah. a lot to be said for like being in a physical space with a lot of people that share that same sort of experience yeah. with you I have this romantic idea of in my head walking along the same paths that I used to go down but as my as my outside I, I sounds really melodramatic yeah. but like just no, retreading ground yeah. you know like re reclaiming it in a way yeah. it's really bizarre oh definitely well I don't think straight people would understand and that's not meant to sound patronising like, of course you wouldn't because it's not been damn straight <laughs> because <laughs> that's not been your experience but it sounds dramatic and I can hear how it sounds but I completely get it because it's mm. like we've lived so long feeling like ashamed of ourselves or hiding ourselves that actually it feels so good to just be like, oh, I am me. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Mm -hmm. but have you been to Pride before? No, I got stuck in Pride once about a few years ago where I think it was on a Sunday or a Saturday. I can't remember. But either way, I was walking from one end of London to the other and I suddenly got stuck in a crowd in Soho. I was like, yeah. oh, no. And then it was by then it was just too late to turn around. So I just remember walking like at a snail's pace, shoulder to shoulder with all of these people. And I was like, I'm just trying to get to the tube station. What actually struck all of us, it was me, Sammy and Linda walking around afterwards, was that mm -hmm. it felt like, a, um, the only thing I can compare it to is the Royal Wedding where just London became this massive party. Like the parade yeah. happened and then suddenly there was people sitting in Trafalgar Square, like in the roads, no cars, it was pedestrianized. People were merry and they were all Happy. Yeah, and actually, it coincided with the World Cup. But there was, and it was just this really nice atmosphere. We were like, "It's coming home, it's coming," and then you had like drag queens dancing on the street as well. It was just <laughs> sick. Like I loved it. Um, yeah, it felt like a post-apocalyptic world where everyone was drunk and partying. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's the thing, and not being afraid because it's Pride Month, and even just seeing the flags around, you're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I feel safe here." And yeah. maybe that's why brands do it. That's a whole nother story. But mm -hmm. like just seeing brands and buildings with the pride flag you're just like oh i'm accepted yeah. here you're yeah. lucky you've got to experience that a little bit but i understand the whole thing of like not well, being able to fully enjoy it yeah if anything that's made it worse though because i'm like i knew it would, it yeah. would be good like i knew it would be mm, fun yeah. also for like people that needed it more than me does that make sense mm. like there's people that yeah, yeah. probably were looking forward to pride for more important reasons than i am like i was looking for yeah. I, i'm very lucky i've got support friends and family but i know there's people that aren't so i guess there's that element of yeah. pride where it's like I was looking forward to spending time with tolerance rather than with people that aren't necessarily. Well, yeah. Like, my boyfriend said to me about how, like, his friends have become, like, his family. Mm. And, like, I can't relate to that because I've had a family that have been very lovely and accepting and, like, mm. of my sexuality. So there's been no need to find family and friendship. But though you're right, for so many LGBTQ plus people out there, like, pride is a way that they can celebrate with their family that they've yeah. chosen themselves everything happens in its own timing and actually i don't i don't know about you i don't mm. actually regret not coming out sooner because i, I just feel like everything's it, no. happened no mm. Mm. i mean i'm sure it would have been great at the age of 15 be like yeah i'm gay but i can only talk from experience like it's been fine like i've not it's not ruined my life no it's obviously there's maybe a few regrets but at the same time not really like i'm i no. This is what I've lived. Yeah. And also, me and you are quite boring people. So I'm so not interesting. Like, I shouldn't have a YouTube channel, to be fair. Like <laughs> Maybe some people are like, oh, don't you regret, like, all those years where you could have just been out partying in gay clubs and stuff? I'm like, yeah. no. I'm like, ooh, no, life. partying ain't me. No. Like, no. Get me to a I bar. I want to be reading a book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a bar. A bar's cooler. We'll be or, in a bar. I actually meant a coffee bar. And by bar, I meant cafe. Yeah. And I mean, during the day, with a book. Yeah, exactly. Not at night time. Because I want to be in bed by 8 p.m. So, scrolling on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, that's actually my ideal day. I spent most. Yeah. I've had to set a timer on my TikTok because I spend far too long scrolling. Okay. Did you consider at any point that it was a brave thing to do to come out online? Um, and the second part was about the role model thing, where it was. Um, do Do you feel that obligation to anyone other than yourself? Because I feel like for me, I feel that obligation because. I kind of resolved at some point, not like I didn't verbalize it, but I kind of thought it that younger me 
maybe took so long to come out because there wasn't many people that he could relate to. I did consider it brave because it was a big deal and I was so scared to do it. And my coming out video wasn't like, well, probably what many people would think is a coming out video because I filmed it just as a kind of rehearsal. Cause I was like, mm. I'll get all these thoughts out and then I'll, then I'll film it properly. But I didn't, I posted the raw video. It was also to address the fact that a strange man had been seen behind me on a weekend away and um, people had started noticing in the comments. So I felt kind of, I had to address it. Like you said, like I called you brave for telling your parents so quickly and you're like, but I don't think that was brave. I think it was brave of the guy at my school who came out really early or whatever. And I think there's this chain now where I'm being called brave by viewers who are still watching the video and commenting even now months later. And like, you've been so brave. And I'm like, as if I'm now in that category of, of brave, mm -hmm. because for so long I felt so ashamed, not just of being gay, but of, of not coming forward with it soon yeah. enough. Vloggers, I think vloggers get a bad name on YouTube mm. of just being self-absorbed and self-obsessed. Maybe some people are, but I feel like most people want to be known for some, standing up for something. And for me, especially, I really want to be a voice for other gay Christians, especially because that's an even more mm. of a niche. And I, to think of other gay Christians really struggling because they think they can't have both or they think God hates them. I'm just like, that's just not true. But I've been through that exact thinking and I've been through a massive journey with it, coming from thinking that it is wrong to like, it's not. And I'm just like, I want to be a voice for those people. And I've had so many messages from Christians, particularly oh, really? from America, which mm. is where most of my audience is from. But I know in America, they're even more religious than they are here in the UK. Initially making that video, I wasn't thinking like, now is the start of me being a role model. Yeah, I was just it's like not my crying, agenda. being like, no, exactly. <laughs> for me, the videos that I'm trying to make, or even just something like this, it's more for a younger version of myself that didn't have something like that to reference. Content creators online, when I was looking to come out, were very confident in their sexuality and, mm. you know, they were wearing the rainbow. <laughs> um, yeah. Or just confident. And I feel like that I am not that as a person. So hopefully, mm. And also I'm a twin, like that isn't, that's a niche in itself. Like yeah. that, has, that draws up its own problems. Like telling Sammy mm. was probably, I actually got Linda to tell Sammy because I couldn't bring myself to do it because I told her first and Sammy was oh. downstairs. I, yeah. was like, I can't do that tonight. <laughs> like I can't do this twice in a row and let alone to a twin, like it's different. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So there is that element to it as well. I think that's a great source of creativity for you as well because you've been so good at creating all this content, whether it's like coming out in lockdown, whether it's sort of like an LGBTQ plus book club, um, or like whatever nice it is, or yes, yeah, all right, just plugging everything. <laughs> I mean, I know that it's isn't it just a normal book club, but you do read some gay books. Uh, oh my god, but, um, I haven't stopped I, all the books I've read, Joel. Have, it's there's so much gay shit. So much gay. <laughs> like I'm like inject it like give me all the books i'm reading right yeah. now are so gay certain films that i watched throughout my coming out journey that i was just like like other people's stories and just mm. hearing like you were saying when people just you just tell them your experience as but you're like i'm not giving you any advice i'll just tell you what my experience was yeah i feel like that's all people need like that's all i wanted i just wanted to hear people's stories whether they're real or made up yeah like, i just want to hear like people's experiences I think that's 100%. the most powerful thing. I think all you can do, yeah, I agree. I think all you can do is be yourself and just mm. and telling a story that is true and, yeah. and you're sharing your experience. It's actually the most beneficial thing you can do sometimes. The end of my <laughs> the end of my notes for the benefit of everyone and yourself is thanks Hans, bye. Thanks Hans, I saw that. <laughs> thanks Hans, bye. That is the outro. You've got stuff going on like the podcast and stuff. Do you want to just quickly say that? Um, yeah, I have a podcast that I started with my boyfriend called uh, question time as nice. a pun for you Good. Um, love because pun. basically he'd been out for a very long time and I haven't so I had lots of questions about the gay community naturally and so it's just where we chat and he gives me his experiences and what he thinks so That's I've been doing that as well as trying to create content on YouTube I, I do to be fair I'm not my YouTube I want to keep kind of normal and not really change up my content that much because yeah. I want to be a voice for like being gay doesn't define you it's a very important part of who you are mm -hmm. but like it doesn't suddenly mean you need to be dressing in rainbows no shade Nikki. because uh, i do want about? some i don't know clothing i, <laughs> oh, I can't hide anywhere <laughs> right joel uh thank you for talking to me and uh no worries this is this is really i find it really interesting yeah this has been great it's been great just chatting about it as you said we've not really had much opportunity to do that so it's no. been nice Thanks and i will tag me. joel in the description of this video so you can check him out all these links down in the thingy magic. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>